So when he was young, he worked with disabled kids and he, you know, liked helping. He wanted to help. Then he needed help, um, had a stroke, had a devastating stroke, left him without speech, without the ability to walk. He recovered. <laughs> he recovered a lot of his function, but, you know, to think that now he's gotten back to a place where he fundraises for the Proudy. He fundraises for others. He, he doesn't think of himself as being disabled. He thinks about how can he help other people. He uses his skills and his abilities to, to give back. And, um, you know, he's, he's inspirational because he hasn't given up on himself, but he also has helped other people. I'm Beth Regal. I am one of the neuro resource facilitators with the Brain Injury Alliance of Vermont. Myself and um, Beth, who is the neuro resource facilitator for Southern Vermont, we both live in Burlington. So she, we're both remote, and she works with um, the southern the southern half of the state. So any clients who come from the south, um, the southern half of Vermont, she will take on as um, their resource facilitator, and she will either meet them remotely or in person and drive down to southern Vermont. I also live in Burlington, and I have northern Vermont clients. I am also enrolled in a master's program. I get, I'm get, going to become a therapist, hopefully. I was um, working in the area of sexual violence um, here at Hope, or at Hope Works um, in Burlington before. Uh, and I saw that the Brain Injury Alliance position came up and it was going back into a field that I really, that was really important to me uh, of working with individuals with um, brain injury. Okay, my name is Pauline, Polly Leith. I live in um, Lamoille County in Morrisville, Vermont. I graduated from the University of Vermont and then I ended up many years later working for the state of Vermont for about 30 years as the Lemon Law Administrator. Frederick, Frederick Kenny Pinesson, out of East of them, Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Pete Daigle, um, and I belong to the Brain Injury uh, Alliance of Vermont. And uh, quite a few years ago, I suffered a very traumatic, severe brain injury. I had a stroke back in 2018, and now it's almost been five years. I mean, my head was cracked open after I went 100 feet up the road after going through the windshield of a car going 125 miles an hour. So yeah, I had, it's kind of no I have brain injury. They drill a hole in my head in the parking lot at the uh, hospital before I could even get in for five hours of brain surgery. I, I didn't even know what happened at first because I just fell to the floor. And I think that's unusual where you didn't have any symptoms and I wasn't able to um, call for help. But I have some some wonderful friends who didn't know where I was, so they they contacted the police, and the police came and and were able to break. They had to break in my house to get me out and brought me down to the hospital. I so believe in the power of words of people. People believing in you. People talking to you, giving you strength. Because I have, I have stories about that from my mother and my aunt and people who were there and how they, uh, they just talked to me like I was just there, you know, not, not like I was some damaged piece of equipment. I was severely damaged and I came from, I was like reborn when I finally came out of the coma and not, I don't remember anything, it just, you know, it happened. And uh, it was like, you know, I was just, I was like, Jello. I mean, I you know, I know nothing. And I, I didn't know what had happened, and, and of course my family was shocked. And they did so much for me. They had to do my finances, and my sister helped me retire from my from my job, and sign up for things I needed to sign up for, like Social Security and all that. So they were just heaven sent. And I remember writing Governor Dean because I wanted to thank them in some way. And he implemented, I think, it, well, I know it's current now, where you can you can recognize someone and he'll write a, a letter of gratitude and he wrote one for my sisters which was so appreciated and he sent me one too which was appreciated. It's been hard at times. Sometimes you know I used to cry a lot and they finally found the right medication to stop that and it wasn't because I was sad it was just because 
I just was overwhelmed. Um, we have people calling the office who are, um, are have nothing, have no, no professionals helping them, have called multiple agencies and gotten a lot of dead ends. Um, we also have people who have case managers and have case workers or um, doctors, therapists who they have a team of people and they just need one extra person to kind of give some input and be an advocate. We also work with people in the Department of Corrections. So, I mean, those people come to us in very different ways, whether that be they send us letters asking for help or they call our helpline and we connect with them. Um, but definitely not linear, very fluid and different for everybody. Some people may need a lot of, um, their, their needs may be higher than others. and their area of need may be very different. So someone may need um, help with housing while another person needs help understanding insurance and how they can apply for Medicaid or something like that. Sitting there with each person and talking about the goals that they have, because what I may think it would be imposing what I may think on them. And so really, really having that conversation of where they are and what goals they want to work on. And then you know, having those tools to kind of bring ideas and work with them on those. And their path may not be the path that I would have chosen, um, but I honor and respect that where they are and where they want to be at that moment. And it, you know, having those conversations and just being there with them for that. I think I just kept thinking each day I have all these things to do. In the rehab down at, in New Hampshire, it was four to five hours a day with rehab at CMC, which I don't think they have that program anymore, but it was so intense. They, and they knew what they were doing because they had training with neuro, neuro conditions and with the physical therapy, the occupational, and you also had to have speech therapy. I remember in one physical therapy location, I walked nine seconds with the therapist by my side and I, I've sent that to so many people because it was such a big thing to be able to walk without a, a rollator or a walker. Sometimes I use a, a cane for balance now, but and at long distances I use the rollator for most of the time, but I usually use the, the cane for balance. And I still keep in contact with the, well, with the physician. They have an honor day or with CMC, so I donate to recognize them that, and, I, and I send my appreciation and I just received a note, well it wasn't from the one doctor, it was from another caregiver who appreciated the donation and she, she said it was an honor to, to treat me and I thought that was a wonderful thing to say. When I was appreciative that she was willing to help me, I did for a while when I was in New Hampshire rehabbing with physical therapy and occupational therapy. We had an in-person support group, which was helpful, but there's all different, all different types that can help when you, when you um, sort of network and, and get information and resources and ideas from different people who may, have, who may have also experienced what you experienced. We have typically one or two webinars a month where a guest speaker um, or a professional or survivor will uh, speak on a virtual webinar platform and anyone can attend. Most of them are free. Some of them we charge money for, but um, most are free. And you can also find them pre-recorded on our website as well. The resource facilitation program, which is the most intense program that we have, which I said is similar to case management and options counseling, um, that one is completely free to survivors and their families. We are grant funded for that, so we do not have to charge people, which is awesome, and um, we're really lucky to have. We have an amazing abundance of outdoor activities here in Vermont. And there's actually exercises you can do to help you balance, which I do all the time when I go to the gym, and uh, in the summer I ride on a bike a lot, and uh, which, you know, I have to be more careful because of balance and stuff, but I can stay safe riding a bike. And it, and hiking, biking, uh, meditation, I meditate every day for an hour. I have, uh, it's audio meditation, so it's like, it's like sound waves that they go from delta to theta, and it, oh man, it's just, it just sounds like going to yoga class when you're dying, you know, it's like, whoa. I'm okay, and if I'm not okay, I just go to a yoga class. <laughs>
That's really true. Yoga is like my number one go-to. It fixes everything. Now I can walk, I can ride a recumbent bike, and I'm working on um, getting my, well, I have my license reinstated, and now I'm, I'm, I'm doing the rehab for the driving coming up this week, so I'm hoping that'll give me more independence to do short errands and to maybe visit friends short, short distances. I want you to take your hands and put them like, like you're pointing, like you're an arrow pointing forward. Okay. And so now turn to one wall and you get to a certain point. Don't, don't turn far, maybe just past the knee. And you see that your nose is going in that direction. Your hands are going in that direction and your chest has turned. Now just turn your body to the opposite wall. You didn't have to do anything with your hands. They went with your core, didn't they? So Tai Chi, when we do a side to side motion or a turning motion, the hands go because the body goes. So that's, you know, that martial arts beginning of Tai Chi, that's what they were disguising, that the whole core is involved in releasing your power, okay? I've had problems with, like I've been into a DMV to take a test. I was a commercial driver for a while. Take this long, hard test, aced it. And the, the, I go to get up to leave and uh, the police are coming in the door. And the guy called the police because he thought I was intoxicated. Because I do slur my words sometimes. Many times um, we find that individuals with brain injuries can have um, difficulty uh, regulating their emotions, right? Or kind of some behavioral type of outburst. Um, and that's very frustrating for them and can have a consequence of if law enforcement doesn't understand what's going on, um, that they can get caught up in the legal system. And so us being able to go and have a conversation, whether it be with a defense attorney or with the judge, um, you know, and we can't influence the judge, but we can talk gently about what is brain injury and how it could impact um, individuals with brain injury and how that may show up in front of them. And you know, so you can't really get away from it. My balance, but I live with it. I do a lot of yoga and I've, I've found the things that work to, to make me, uh, like my motto on my card is survive well. As a matter of fact, that was the name of my team. And what it means is not just to survive, but to survive well. And in doing so, you find the necessary accommodations that allow you to live a good life. And I work, you know, I'm retired, but I, I work a couple of days a week at a car dealership that really helps me a lot. But I have a recumbent bike now at home where I can look out my, my picture window and look at the back and I, I try to do 40 minutes a day doing that. Everyone has their own story. Um, we all come to, to where we are at in our place in life uh, with our own story, and that's the same with anyone that I'm talking to. Brain injury is not the same for everyone. And really, really enjoy being an advocate for these people because Unfortunately, in the systems we have here, and I mean across the country, healthcare systems, housing, it's really, um, it's really hard for a lot of people. And a lot of my clients have had hardships in any of those fields. Super lucky to have a really close-knit group of people that we work with at our nonprofit, and we're all very passionate and love what we do and love um, connecting with survivors of any you know, shape or form, who've had their injury for 30 years or who got it a few months ago and need some help. The Brain Injury Association was started on the premise that people in Vermont were really needed some help and they didn't know where to go. You had a brain injury and first of all, people didn't know what it was, you know, you tell them to get a brain injury, oh yeah, sure. No, <laughs> I mean, and uh, you know, it's been, Ever since the side, we've grown better and better and closer and closer. And now, it's the place, the, the number one place for people, doctors, caregivers, um, survivors, to go to, to acquire 
um, direction to the resources they need. We have the Neuro Resource Facilitation Program, which is the one that recently started uh, that myself and Beth run. And then we have events. So we have this walk, this 5K walk and roll. We have an annual conference that we have in the fall. And those are our two main events. And we also have a lot of support groups. So myself and Beth run our Burlington in-person support group at the Fletcher Free Library. I participated on a monthly basis via Zoom, which is helpful with people with different kinds of brain injuries from all over, pretty much over the state or central central part of the state, which makes it easy where you don't have to commute. The walk and roll is, is great because, for one thing, it brings together people that have a TBI, survivors, and people who work with them, caregivers, and all these people are people that we have uh, design support groups within the Brain Injury Association. And I, I'm, the first support group I went to, I was like, I said, wow, it's like being with people from my own country, you know, people that speak my language, and that's kind of what it's like, because they understand when you talk to them about brain injury. So I was away from my home four years, but I came back last June, so it took a while to kind of get reacclimated to living alone, um, learning all the, the resources in my community to take advantage of Meals on Wheels and rural community transportation. And just briefly, we have a, a community organization called Lamoille Neighbors, which assists with um, transportation and uh, activities and things, which I find very valuable to kind of, to, to socialize a bit so you don't become too distant from people. I remembered who I was, but I was looking at <laughs> Through a glass, it was it was like it was it was like a movie. It wasn't it wasn't like it was about myself. It was it was about this person on on the screen, and uh, it became so strange. And I even wrote about it in one of my stories. I've always written like stories about times in my life where things that happened were were helpful in. And, and letting me survive well. And I had all these stories, and I showed them to a friend of mine who's a, um, a writer, and she uh, she um, sent him to Chicken Soup for the Soul, <laughs> sent five of them to Chicken Soup for the Soul, and they published three of them. So three of my stories were in the uh, recovery from traumatic brain injury. So it was a way of, I always felt like I had this gift. It's not something I, I made or something that, yeah, it was a gift. It was given to me and I like to give it out. And I, I thought, wow, what a better way to give it out than, than that. Because you kind of think you're forgotten, but, but you're not. People still remember you and, and think a lot of you and whatnot. But it is, it is emotional because it's such a long time. <laughs> and I never, I never cried when I got ill. And I know I had an occupational therapy. She said, oh, you will, you will. She said that, that you'll just break down. But I never really did that. I think I just kept thinking each day I have all these things to do. In the rehab down at, in New Hampshire, it was four to five hours a day with rehab at CMC, which I don't think they have that program anymore, but it was so intense. They, and they knew what they were doing because they had training with neuro, neuro conditions and with the physical therapy, the occupational, and you also had to have speech therapy. I believe there's uh, there's gifts in us, there's strengths in us that we've all been given, and sometimes it, it takes something like that to get it out. I may never have, I may have lived my whole life and never gotten it out if this hadn't happened. So that's why I call it a gift because I feel that there's things I can do that will help this world become a better place. A lot of professionals ask us about what the referral process looks like. And we are anticipating that people will be with us for up to a year. Um, but it's different for everybody. If someone needs only a week of help, basically they need some, they need connection to a resource and they say, okay, I'm good. You you gave me the number, the email, the, the website for this resource. I can reach out to them on my own. I just needed that help. That may be a few weeks long versus other people who may be with us for months because they need to get on a certain program that 
there's a wait list for and so we need to wait with them and basically help fill in the gaps where we can in our capacity. And sometimes, you know, we feel like we're the only ones out there and, um, you know, we, we'd love to see federal and state and putting more money into, you know, the impact of how many individuals in Vermont alone have brain injury. Um, and probably a lot that don't really realize it right now, too. Um, and the impact that may have on their life if something else comes down the road. Um, whether they're aging, whether, you know, there's another, you know, a hiking accident or a ski accident or a stroke or, you know, COVID that, you know, impacts something that was already going on or had happened before. And so, you know, we, d we do need, we need federal funding, we need state funding. The medical field has finally realized that brain injury is, is a real thing and it's, it's, it's not always visible. Many, many people have a stroke go home and don't realize that they've had a brain injury. That shouldn't be happening. You know, is University of Vermont brain injury program connecting them to resources out in the state? I don't know. Should they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they, they shouldn't have to dig for, you know, finding us. Mm -hmm. um, that should be a flyer in their, their waiting room. So uh, it's, it's definitely something that education-wise needs to continue. I'm a skier. Uh, I love to ski. That's why I moved to Vermont. My oldest daughter came to University of Vermont and graduated, and my younger one transferred into UVM. And I moved up here full-time uh, to ski. and. Uh, I just, I love mountains, I love Lake Champlain. I like to ski, bike, um, walk my dog, I read a lot, uh, watch, binge watch Netflix shows. <laughs> um, a lot of outdoor stuff though, mainly. The saying I always say is for TBI patients, do what you have to do and be strong and be proud. Nothing happens overnight. It, it is time, a time process. So just take each day the best you can and do the best you can. And a little bit, you, you'll see progress a little bit at a time. I, I, want to, I want to thank all the people in, in my life and, and actually anybody's life that, that, have, that are trying to understand because you know, you, you, if you look at something, you don't have a brain injury, and I'm explaining to you something. Okay, it might feel like it's what you 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 think you do, but it's different. It's and uh, so you know, I ask the world to just have a little a little more empathy and just help us become. I say life is good, and it, only because I have the things in place, and I have this beautiful brain injury association that I call my family and friends, that has enabled me to uh, survive well, and that, I mean, that's, that's really what it's all about, you know? And a lot of the stuff that I've learned is not only relevant to people with a TBI, but relevant to anybody, you know. I speak to people a lot about it, and they'll say, oh yeah, that's true for me too. At this point in time, everything you need to live a good life is, or survive well, is, is out there, and there's, organizations like the Brain Injury um, Alliance to help you find that. And so I, I say go for it, go for it, go for it, because really, it's worth it. Peace and love, man. Still grow, still grow.